Welcome, everybody. I'm Sven Hosford with another video edition of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. It's June 24th. Uh, we're right in the thick of summer. We've got our new summer issue out. Hopefully, you've been able to find it. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of places around the area where you can. And we've got a map up on our website that shows all the different areas. Uh, it's out in a lot of yoga studios and health food stores and waiting rooms. Gotten into a lot of different waiting rooms this time. And uh, if you know of a place where you'd like it to be, uh, drop me an email at svenhosford at gmail.com uh, and, uh, and or talk to the owner, or if you are the owner, that's even better. Uh, we'll get some copies out to you. This is going to be on the stands through the end of August. And uh, this podcast will be talking to a lot of the authors that you are reading about, including this one. We'll be talking to Joan Kaler coming up in a little bit. And uh, we're here every Tuesday at 4 o'clock live, and then you can find us weekly on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We're going to uh, talk to our sponsor, Get Organically Social. Uh, it's actually Organically Social, uh, Get Organically Social's website. We're going to talk to them a little bit later in this podcast uh, and get an update from Trenton about some uh, of the exciting developments. He's got a great a great network he's putting together, great heart, and we look forward to hearing from him. So the first one we always uh, like to start the podcast with is a calendar of events of what's coming up. Uh, it's been a pretty busy summer already. Uh, last weekend was kind of nuts with uh, all the different activities in the solstice. I'm sure you were doing something exciting. Uh, coming up this week on Thursday evening uh, at 4 o'clock, a little bit happy hour, at an open house at the uh, Center Point Sleep Center in McMurray. And this is going to be uh, their open house and also a gathering of the integrative medicine professionals, uh, which I host. And we do different events around town. Uh, this is a real exciting uh, opportunity for people who are looking for space or, or are looking to connect with a larger group of professionals to create a, a strong network of integrative care. Uh, Center Point Sleep Center has six locations around the area and uh, they only work at night it's a sleep center so the owners are looking to expand out into some lifestyle medicine and offer the space up on a on a part-time uh, or full-time basis during the day and it's a real good opportunity so make sure you check out our meetup group for that uh, also coming up this week this is kind of fun uh, one of our new authors uh, Debbie Harden is an acupuncturist and she does an acupuncture happy hour at uh, on Friday at the Embody in Lawrenceville. This is a nice chance to come down and uh, wind down from the week with a little uh, acupuncture and some uh, fresh juice. This is a really cool thing. It's happening at uh, Friday at the Embody in Lawrenceville. Uh, you can all this stuff is up on our website, of course, too. Uh, then on uh, Monday, the thirtieth, another one of our advertisers, the Schwartz Market, is going to be hosting something pretty exciting. It's unprocessed cooking with Chef AJ. Uh, Chef AJ is one of the most sought-after speakers in the nation's vegan scene and the author of Unprocessed: How to Achieve Vibrant Health and Your Ideal Weight. And he'll be doing a cooking demonstration from six to eight o'clock Monday, June thirtieth. And this is being presented by the Jewish Vegetarians of North America in collaboration with the Schwartz Living Market. How cool is that? Uh, this is going to be the, the venue for this cooking demo. So attendees will not only uh, learn techniques to make delicious whole food meals, they will receive samples from uh, Chef AJ's culinary prowess. Tickets are only $10. Advanced purchase is requested. Space is limited. Um, and you want to go to jewishveg.com slash chef dash AJ. Of course, we have all that up on our website as too, right? Um, also, uh, if you miss the conference, uh, the, the Lifestyle Medicine Conference in May, one of the big speakers uh, that a lot of people wanted to see there was Dr. Betsy O'Neill. She is uh, going to be speaking at uh, St. Clair on July 2nd uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's part of the Psychiatric Grand Rounds that happens on the first Wednesday of every month at St. Clair. Uh, that is a podcast live from the St. Clair website and YouTube channels. Uh, not their website, but the uh, Google Plus and YouTube. Uh, and also we're going to make it a meetup group for uh, our 125 now integrated medicine professionals who've signed up for the meetup.com 
uh, Integrative Medicine Professionals group. And uh, that's going to be a whole ton of fun, I think. Uh, Dr. Betsy is always so interesting, and she's really got her pulse on what's going on in integrative medicine. And then on August 6th, uh, I don't know, we have all the data up on our website yet, but uh, Dr. Uma, another one of our authors, is going to be speaking at St. Clair, again, Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, also in July, uh, David Newman, a.k.a. Durga Das. Oh, he's so wonderful. Uh, he's such a great, if you love Kirtan, if you love that call and response in the yoga tradition, he's just got one of the best voices going. And he's going to be at the Union Project on uh, July 20th. And that'll get everybody in the mood for July 26th, the World Magazine Yoga Fest. Um, our friend Trenton will be there with the Organically Social People. And everybody who owns a pair of yoga pants in Pittsburgh, I think uh, will probably be there as well. So that's the calendar for this week. So I'm on the line today with Joan Kaler, an MSED, LPC, and a DCEP. And of course, one of the first things we'll find out is just what a DCEP is. Uh, Joan has been a professional counselor since 1994, counseling children, families, and individuals with anxiety, depression, hair pulling, obsessive compulsive disorders, and PTSD. Joan started the first support group in Pittsburgh for OCD and Tricot. Trichotillomania. Did I say that right, John? That was a great try, Sven. Trichotillomania. Trichotillomania. Yeah, trichotillomania. Uh, and that was in 1998. After graduating from the Duquesne University with a master's in science and education, Joan earned certification in cognitive behavior therapy from the Behavior Therapy Institute with the International Obsessive Compulsive Disorders Foundation in 1996. I know this is a lot, but this is important stuff, and I think it'll give everybody a good that. foundation of... of uh, just how versed you are in this subject. Uh, you are an expert in OCD, teaching exposure and response prevention. And then in 1996, you discovered emotional freedom techniques and energy psychology, uh, which accesses information from the brain and that you revolutionized your whole practice. And we're gonna talk some about that. In fact, you wrote some about that in your article for us in the summer issue of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. So welcome Joan Kaler. Thank you, Sven. It's great to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. And I got to say, you were doing podcasting way before podcasting was cool. Uh, you've been doing—you've been on the air for a couple of years now, right? Off and on, but this past year, I really got into it with my local community cable channel. So I have a whole cable channel on YouTube now. That's great. So that's uh, the Peters Township Community Cable, right? Right, Peters Township Community Cable. They have just an awesome studio over there. And they really have an interesting lineup of um, integrative medicine professionals, too. Dr. Heidi has a show on there as well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask the naturopath. Yeah, this is a, this is really a cool place. Um, and you've also got a, a radio show on uh, Blog Talk Radio. Um, well, I kind of let that go because oh, being the hand that I am, I prefer the studio better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we should tell everybody that might be listening to this on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, go on over to the YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, podcast. Um, well, let's, um, you know, your, your, your theme is really, uh, you know, in the article that you wrote for us and uh, on the uh, looking on your website and, and all of your writing is really about getting to the core of issues. And um, you're one of the many and growing number of psychologists who has discovered that just talk therapy isn't quite enough. Do you want to talk a little All bit right. about that? Just for the viewers, just to um, make sure that there's no misunderstanding, I am considered a, a counselor, um, not a psychologist, so I don't want anybody to get upset if they hear a psychologist. But Okay. Yes, I just found that energy psychology really helps to get to the root cause of whatever the problem is. So there's really no point in talk therapy alone. It just isn't enough. So by using various energy methods, we are able to get to the emotional energy of the problem. And when it, describe what that is. Why? What is that energy problem? How is it stuck in our field? And, you know, what is it that energy medicine does that talk therapy does not? When we experience 
a surprise, a change, a trauma, something that goes against our value or a belief system, it gets stuck in our cells and in our minds, in our brains. It vibrates at a certain level and this comes out through our emotions, whether it's sadness, depression, anxiety, fear, trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, however we're feeling, that's where we vibrate. And that vibration is stored in our energetic system, in the electricity of our bodies. We're all walking batteries. So if we feel great, then gosh, our battery is right side up. We're flowing. The chi is moving. Um, we are in the zone so to speak, but when we're not feeling as healthy, when we're not feeling happy, our battery is flipped. And all that energy, we're vibrating at a lower level, we're, we're vibrating at a place of um, ill health or disease, I guess you could say. So my job is to find out where that vibration is and to be able to use these energy methods to release it. Yeah. And then when you release where that vibration is, where that low frequency of energy is, then all of a sudden health is restored, both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, on every possible plane. So it's like being a kid in a candy shop. When I was first introduced to this, I just thought, oh, this is really cool stuff. So then that just led me to hunger for more and more information so that I could better assist my clients. It, it, I, I just want to kind of sit with that topic a little bit. So these stuck energy pockets are in our field. I mean, it's we've all had traumas in our life. It's fair to say that each one of us has numerous uh, and you know some are obviously more strong than others or have a varying impact on our on our life than others um some of them we're able to, to slough off and and pay no attention to uh you know some of us people especially have been through war and things think about it every day what is it is it our i mean these these stuck fields are in our system all the time is it that when we focus on that when our conscious attention is on that that's that's what brings that forward is that how that works because they're they're kind of there in the background for all of us at some point right. i really believe that um we are guided more by our unconscious than by our conscious mm. so why we tend to make if somebody makes um, an unhealthy choice, an unhealthy decision. That's guided by what's in our unconscious. Now, to really get a little deeper into all this, the chakra system, which I use the analogy, they're like the circuit breakers of the body. So if a particular chakra, the first seven chakras is what I'm trained in. If one of these chakras is popped like a circuit breaker, then we are going to operate differently than if all the chakras are spinning in a positive direction. Yeah, that's a really so good metaphor. Yeah. If somebody is spinning, has a lot of fear, their root chakra is out. If someone does not have self-confidence, their third chakra around the solar plexus, that's weak. If someone doesn't know how to get their needs met or speak their truth, their throat chakra is congested. Mm -hmm. If somebody has depression that they haven't been able to shake, their crown and their sixth chakra has congestion in it. Hmm. So all these chakras have to be spinning in a positive direction, and that's the basis for well-being. And then the meridians come out from there, and then the bioenergy field around us, the chakras are connected. The chakras are like the limbs of a tree and the leaves of the tree you could think of as the bioenergy field that's around us. So it all sure. connects. Just such cool stuff. <laughs> now, we're, we're uh, with this podcast and with our magazine, we're attempting to um, reach out to traditional doctors who may not quite understand all about how this exactly works. Um, so let me ask a couple of questions about that aspect, about the chakras and the spinning and so forth. When you find somebody who has a problem that 
is now serious enough for them to come to you. Do you always find one of the chakras out of place or, or some sort of energetic imbalance? Not necessarily. There's usually some sort of energetic imbalance to be sure. Okay. But uh, the chakras don't have to be out of place necessarily. I'll tell you what, people heal a whole lot faster when all their chakras are flowing in the right direction. Yeah. So that makes it easier for me. Okay. And I do know how to rebalance chakras and teach other people how to balance their own so they don't have to make an appointment to come to me. The whole point of energy psychology is to empower the client. And then that I think that's really a, a whole area that we could spend some time on too. Is that you send people home with homework, and and things that they're supposed to do every day, right? Well, I hope that they do it. I ask for like my teacher, Doctor Nicosia says, I ask for five. If I get two, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I always tease them a little bit. For less serious situations, people always come in and say, I don't want to be on this medication. And I say, well, this is what you have to do if you don't want to be on it. Mm -hmm. You have to practice my breathing strategies. You have to practice my tapping strategies. And you have to do it consistently. And then maybe we can work with your doctor to wean off some of these medications. And that's a maybe. Because you have to do your part, too. I'm just not going to wave a magic wand and suddenly all your problems will be gone. This yeah. is an interactive participation here. Do you find it works better with people who are actively seeking to get off their medications? It gives them more motivation to try. Yeah. Talk about... And parents um, especially want, don't want their children to go on medication. Oh, sure, sure. Do you get the parents that like to that want to you know, work with their kids and, and do the exercises with them, that sort of thing? Yep. Oh, yep. That's great. That's one of my requirements. As the parents come in with their children, now if it's a teenager, I'll talk with the teenager about 15 or 20 minutes alone before bringing the parents in. But I always do family counseling with minors. Yeah. If you're 17 or under, you're bringing the parent, the caregiver into, because we're going to talk about how to turn this whole situation around so everybody is happy. Because parents have a million questions. They have more questions than their teens. Sure. sure. Now talk about how you you were a traditional therapist and you were working with OCD and mm -hmm. uh, the word that I have already forgotten. Trick trichotillomania. Trichotillomania. Trick, yeah. Trichotillomania. Yeah. So you were an expert in that. Then you became a counselor, or you were you were you started a support group, and then you became a counselor. In 1989, what happened was um, I was introduced to the book The Boy Who Couldn't Stop Washing by Judith Rappaport because I did pull my hair out for 25 years. Mm. So I did it, not know how to get out of it. And truly, there wasn't anything back then. Yeah. So then I was connected with the Obsessive Compulsive Foundation up in Connecticut back in 89. And they taught me how to start a support group. So I started the first support group for OCD and trichotillomania back then. And I had so much fun doing that. Then I decided to go back to school and get my counseling degree. So then it kind of morphed from that, and I went back to Duquesne University, got my counseling degree in 94, and I was a purist. It was cognitive behavior therapy, exposure and response prevention for OCD, impulse control, teaching people how to um, be able to control the urges of hair pulling. And then all of a sudden, I was introduced to thought field therapy by my supervisor in 96 and my whole world changed. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that's what I wanted you to talk some more about is how your personal experience, because you've been doing all the best stuff that was available at the time. And then all of a sudden you find this new method and what happened to you then? How did your life change? Well, the good news and the bad news. The good news <laughs> was I had a lot of fun and my clients started getting better faster. And then they didn't need the you anymore. Because this is, when you think about it, this is 2014. Uh -huh. So 18 years ago, the associations that I belong to, uh, the International Obsessive Compulsive Foundation, the Trichotillomania Learning Center, they didn't want to hear about energy therapies. That was considered a voodoo. Okay. 
How are and they now? They're still not thrilled with it. Okay. <laughs> what kind of is it, what kind of science is out there? Do we have any studies on it? There's uh, a ton of science on this. Specifically for OCD and no, nothing for okay. OCD. Okay. So if anybody would like to help me create a study research on this, I would be. I'm not a researcher. I'm a clinician. Sure. I'm a therapist. I am a teacher. I am a motivational speaker, but I am not a researcher. Yeah, well, that's what so, I, yeah, I like to be clear too. So that, you know, there's lots of research on energy medicine per se, but as you say, not a whole lot for OCD. There um, is none for OCD and uh, even less, we're below zero for trichotillomania. Yeah. But so there isn't anything out there for either one of those two, but I am holding the intention that I am starting a dialogue for the folks for both organizations and we can work together and I can teach them what I've learned just sure. like uh, I've learned what they've taught me. Well, in, in, in uh, you know, without clinical evidence, then what we have is uh, anecdotal well, and certainly your, got, your story is a strong what story. What we've got is research on uh, phobias, trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and it's all through the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. Right. That is where the research lies. What's the link between OCD and all of these other things, the traumas or the uh, anxieties? Or, do, do, you, do you know what it okay. is? Well, this is from my perspective. Some of this can be inherited. Uh, the link, what I've seen clinically is that sometimes when either adults or children go through a tremendous change in their lives, if they already have a predisposition for anxiety, then it can show itself in OCD. It might pop up in another anxiety problem. It might pop up in um, agoraphobia, school phobia, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder. And a lot of those do have good, solid clinical evidence for right. energy medicine. Right. So, but the old-fashioned way, Sven, this is what interested me so much in energy psychology is because the old-fashioned way of helping somebody with OCD, for instance, is exposure and, pre exposure and response prevention. Mm -hmm. So you find out how it presents itself and then you slowly expose someone to their fear, to their irrational fear that the OCD is telling them might be true. And then you wait for their discomfort to go up to a certain level. And then you hang out for about half an hour, 45 minutes until their fear dissipates or starts to what we call habituate or get bored and go away. But what, I found is that I think that's cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> I would rather teach them how to tap it out so they don't stress out their adrenal system and they don't have to go into this with fear. So when we tap on it, then they find out that the thing that the OCD told them was the truth. There is no, it's, the fear is gone. And then yeah. they can do the exposure response prevention without the fear. Because with the exposure, all they're getting basically is a chance to practice not reacting the way they really want to react, but they still exactly. really want to react that way. Right. But with the energy medicine, then the actual core issue is actually tapped out, as you say. Interesting. Right. What are us? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Well, sometimes it goes back to a change. If somebody, if a family, moves here from out of town or moves anywhere and the child is taken out of school or there's a divorce or a separation or maybe one parent is not very healthy maybe they have the disease of alcoholism um, or maybe some kind of a trauma happened with one parent then that will show up in a variety of ways I mean it's it, it'll show up with the child in uh, anxiety, OCD, um, acting out, anger. So there are a whole bunch of unfortunate life situations that can trigger a mental illness. Yeah. So they could have a predisposition to it, or they could suffer from um, a trauma from their parent or an adult. Maybe they coped the best they could all their lives, and now it's just too much. Yeah. Don't we all have? And I kind of asked this before, but don't we all have traumas that we need to deal oh, with? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could all benefit from a round of 
energy medicine. That's what makes energy. us human is living this life and dealing with all the different circumstances that life brings us. Yeah. Now, in your um, various teachings and, and things I was able to scour out on the internet, um, one of the things that you talk about is using energy medicine. I think you do uh, energy medicine for money and attracting money and your attitudes around money. Do you want to talk about that? I That's love a fun thing. energy medicine. For, it's so much fun. <laughs> I was blessed two weeks ago to meet with Jack Canfield, the author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul oh, series. He oh, is cool. so fun. Yeah. But yeah, tapping for money. Oh my gosh. The law of attraction because sometimes people have blockages to success in that they don't feel they deserve it, they don't feel it's possible, or they have a lot of yes buts. Yes, but I have no money to go back to school. Yes, but I can't leave this job that I hate because it has health insurance and I have the golden handcuffs. Yes, but I don't want to leave this agency that I've been a, where I've been a therapist for 20 years and start out on my own. What if I fail? What if I succeed? The yes buts and the what ifs keep people stuck. Mm -hmm. So when you use energy med medicine and energy psychology to help people tap out their fears then and relax and become grateful, um, expecting, expecting abundance to come into their lives, expecting money to come into their lives. Mm -hmm. Once you clear out any fears or hesitations or feelings of not deserving, then yes, money does have an easier chance of flowing into their lives. Yeah, I can see from uh, from the skeptics. Yeah, from the skeptics perspective, I can see where, you know, the the magical thinking is is one thing that critics often uh, well, go after. Well, here's the thing: it's not just about tapping out a yes but or a fear. You gotta put the work into well, that, that's what you can't the, sit around eating bonbons all day and expect money to come to your door. Exactly. But my, my point was going to be that, you know, it, what you can prove is that you can change people's attitude or energy medicine. If applied correctly, people can then change their core beliefs around things. So it's not a big stretch to say I can change the tension I might feel around money or I can change the self-sabotaging behavior. And in that way, certainly it's much easier easier to build a career with those mental deficiencies removed. There's nothing magical thinking about it. Yeah, no. And it's not just positive psychology. It's not there just fairy actual, dust and things are going to appear. Yeah. No. There are actual chemical changes that happen in the mind and the body when these blockages are removed. Well, now that's interesting. Can you identify some of those? I'm so glad you asked me. I'm so glad I brought that up. Uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm the interviewer okay. here. I get to ask no, the questions. No, I'm my big mouth. <laughs> what I would tell people to do is to go to Candace Park. Of, okay, let's see. Biology of Belief, Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. Sure. And, oh, let's see. Candace Park, what did she write? Okay. Molecules of Emotion. Molecules of Emotion. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And that so was, those two people who are so much smarter than I am. But and he does actually list the chemicals and the changes that Right. That as best so. as I can explain it is when you tap on the endpoints of the meridians on those acupressure points, it changes the brain chemistry. I think that's that's good enough for uh, for us lay people. Uh, so uh, talk about some of the ways that you're seeing this uh, applied generally in mental health uh in America, I mean, there's a lot of veterans that need help. Are we getting any progress with oh, different agencies? Oh, that just breaks my heart. Um, well, the VA is still stuck, so we yeah. can't get in there yet. Maybe we should tap on the VA itself. We should tap yeah. on the VA, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but ASAP and Gary Craig and Tina Craig, uh, father and daughter, and Gary is the creator of Emotional Freedom Techniques. He has done quite a bit of work at the VA, working with veterans. Good. Um, also, I've got to give a shout out to Nick Ortner. Okay. His group, The Tapping Solution, has done quite a bit of work. They were successful in getting into Newtown to help the victims um, 
of the tragedy up in Connecticut. I think that was up in Connecticut, yeah, right? Was that yeah, in Connecticut, yeah. Oh, I'm interesting. trying to remember what state that was in, but the tra the shooting tragedy that was up there. Sure. So there are pockets of tappers and people who practice energy medicine that give of their time for post traumatic stress disorder for the veterans. There are there is research going on right now at the VA. Um, I don't know who's funding it, to be honest with you, but I know that the research is ongoing, that it has been very effective, very helpful. And anybody can go to a YouTube channel, type in energy psychology, emotional freedom techniques for post-traumatic stress disorder, and there are some remarkable videos about veterans healing from war trauma yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, I really can't emphasize that enough for anybody who knows of a veteran or is a veteran. Uh, this is really, uh, you know, I interviewed Greg Nicosia several times over the last few years, and uh, he is uh, uses the word cure. This is not a treatment. Yes. This is yes. not a, a Band-Aid. This is a cure getting to the root of the problem. And yes. uh, I would like to put out there, Sven, sure. for any veteran or someone who knows a veteran, if somebody is suffering, I would be honored to help somebody for free, F-R-E-E. -E. If they want to contact me, I've tried to do this through one hour of caring. I've tried to contact the VA, sure. and um, well, a we'll, number of veterans would rather work with a man than a woman. Sure, but there's women veterans too, and they're double right. traumatized. Right. So sometimes. if anybody so. needs help for post-traumatic stress disorder and they have served our country, please right. call me because I would be honored to help you let go of this. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I would be honored to help cure post-traumatic stress disorder. Well said. Well, uh, as a veteran, I thank you, and I, I know my brothers oh, and sisters. Oh, thank you for your service. I didn't realize you were a veteran. You bet. Um, Joan Kaler, it's uh, always uh, a pleasure. Um, I don't talk to you quite often as, as much as I'd like to. Why don't you give us your uh, vital statistics? Uh, how can people reach you? <laughs> vital statistics, 724-942-5477, or Joan Kaler at Hotmail.com, right. or Joan Kaler.com, Kaler or on Facebook on Secrets of Hair Pulling, Skin Picking, and Anxiety, or my new Facebook page, The Tapping Revolution. Fantastic. Well, I thank you once again, and uh, I look forward to future conversations, and hopefully we'll see you again in another issue of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. Oh, I look forward to it. Thank you, Sven. Thank, thank you, you so for your much. time. It's been fun. You bet. So that's always such a blast to talk to the local professionals and uh, what's going on. And we are working actively to create a network of professionals uh, at health and wellness in a variety of different ways. And one of our partners in this effort is Organically Social. Uh, they are a sponsor of ours, and we help them every chance that we can. And uh, we're going to do a weekly update. Last week we had uh, Trenton Ozipak, the uh, founder, on for the whole podcast, but we're going to do a weekly update with Trenton just to find out what's going on. So let's check in with Trenton and see what's happening. So every week you're getting closer and closer to uh, the launch here of your cards. Tell us about where we are in uh, building the network so far of businesses that are uh, joined up in the Organically Social Network. Sure. So we, when we first launched, we had kind of this a soft launch of building the network, and obviously our full launch is when we start selling the membership cards. But the up until this point, actually this morning, we brought our 30th business on board. So currently we have 30 local businesses about health, wellness, community engagement that are teaming up with us to offer you deals and discounts with your organically social card. Um, these range from everything from optometry to dental to food and drink, groceries, fitness classes, um, coaching, spiritual services, meditation, etc. So really we have this whole encompassing this network that allows you to kind of access all these best life opportunities um, and that's kind of where we are with them and those 30 businesses. These 30 businesses are currently, um, this morning I just got a bunch of uh, deals submitted actually to us through the businesses, uh, the system that they submitted through. So actually I'm seeing right now live, you know, what deals are coming up for the cardholders uh, starting for next week so that way we can start promoting those. 
Can you give us any peek on uh, what those deals are, or is that a secret? I until... can. No, I will give you a few. So I know um, I'll leave businesses out, but I'll give some. I'll give some examples. Um, one business is doing about forty percent off on Himalayan salt cave visits. Um, another business is doing. I gave it away there. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> There's only one, but I'm going to let them. Some people might not know. That's the beauty of it. Uh, another one is doing um, a ten dollars off thirty dollars for a grocery. Um, you know, basically a grocery bill. Um, another business is doing a discount on their weekly specials. Um, I'm trying to think of another one. Oh, another one's doing a discount off the product for their service. So you buy a product, obviously, and this is then you go and take part in their services. So instead of buying the product and service at full price, you're getting the product at a discounted rate, which then saves on the whole final bill in general. So That's awesome. And uh, you're about to launch a pre-sale for the cards for people as well, right? Yeah, the pre-sale is actually going to start next week. So for all of you uh, eager card holders out there, or interested card holders, the sale will begin next week. Um, it's going to be a lit limited offer pre-sale in the, in the sense that we're going to sell X amount of cards um, to the first of those consumers to buy these cards. And then what we'll do is we'll discount that card at a uh, the lowest rate that we'll sell all year. Um, so one, it's kind of thanking you as an initial card holder uh, for fueling our launch. But uh, it's also getting you to get those deals as soon as possible right off the bat. That's great. And then so the real launch will be, did you have a date for the, the, the actual launch for cards? So full launch is actually going to be on July 9th. July 9th is going to be our first full, full swing day in the Pittsburgh public market, which is again our office space. We will be in the office space with selling cards by phone, by uh, submissions online, in person, when we're at events, we'll be selling cards. I mean, you can also um, print off a form and submit your um, your payment through the mail as well. So what's nice is literally July 9th is the full swing of card sales at the market. So and up yet, until that point, up until that point, there'll be there'll be deals and discounts on your card to make sure that we reward those people until the cards do start selling. And your office space is in the Pittsburgh public market. This is real exciting. We are. We're really, really excited. I mean, it's, it's again, from our last podcast, Ben, we talked about how it's so central, um, how it is just kind of the middle space between the north and the south. And, again, the people don't travel too well in Pittsburgh. So it's convenient. Um, it's, it's perfect for the consumer awareness. Everyone who goes in the market is, is somehow connected to health and wellness in some way or another. Um, and again, that's where their interests lie. So it's just really smart for us from a business standpoint to have our space there. And the community area that's available there, I mean, is, is a no-brainer for us to hold our events. So in August, we'll be holding our Health and Wellness Expo um, there with all of our network members. So that's something to keep an eye out for down the road. Yeah, what's the date on that? I don't have the date yet. We are kind of in a process of picking a few. Um, again, we have to kind of be flexible with our network members and kind of pick the date that's going to work best for 30 potential 30 plus businesses at that point. So I have a few dates um, for just kind of bouncing some ideas. Is like a what, what would work best is the first kind of event that we're holding. Talk a little bit about how you use the 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 power of social media as a part of what you're actually doing with organically social. Sure. So the whole idea of organically social in the sense that one, um, organic meaning interpersonal, health and wellness, raw, um, local. So that's the organically piece to the organically social. The social piece, again, is very, um, you can combine social media, you can combine blog, you can combine our online community, which is our website. But if you really do think social, it's more about the essence of the people within the network. Um, and building this network and having those great, um, fostering those interpersonal relationships that we're hopefully going to bring with one, the community of the cardholders, two, with the network, and then intermingle them together um, and string them together to make this a larger organically social community. So the way we use social media, and you're right, I, me, the rest of the team, our interns, we can't keep our hands off our phones, all of our tablets, computers. Um, sometimes I don't think it's the best thing, but what is great for us and for our business 
is it does allow us to build that organically social community. Um, it allows us to reach to a different target market. So, I mean, again, we were just talking um, with a business the other day, and they asked, what's our reach? What is organically social's reach? As of now, like any other new business, we are two, we're just a little over two months old. So our reach is relatively small, right, as, a, as organically social, me and my team. But if you look at the network we have with the relationships that we've built, our, our reach is tens of thousands. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see the potential that we have, um, like any other business would. I'm just, I'm just speaking me about because we're, we're using us as an example. But for any other business, if you build these relationships and cross-promote kind of in that way, um, that idea of social media, just one, connects you so much more to people that were never on your potential radar. Um, and two, it makes it fun. I mean, that's the whole idea of be kind of organically social is keeping it fun and kind of simple, but also quite social at the same time. So I hope that kind of answers your question. But um, yeah, I think it really does just boil down to keeping the social connections more than anything through social, you know, through social media. You know, web conferencing and thanking people for meeting with us through, I always say, tweet me, um, just because a lot of people say, hey, it's so nice, you know, let's connect. So then we always say, hey, it's nice to tweet meet you, you know, so it, it, it's nice. And then we finally get to meet them in person, and it's, it's much more rewarding at that point in time. <laughs> well, it's all about relationships, and uh, I'm really yeah. glad to, to, to be uh, a part of your network and you a part of ours. And Thanks. we'll talk to you again next week. Uh, every week we'll give everybody an update on where, where organically social is and what's, what's happening. So thanks for being with us. Thank you. And that's it for this week. I'm Sven Hosford for the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. Look for the print issue out on the streets. Uh, look for us online and look for us here every Tuesday at 4 p.m. live. Also on YouTube and uh, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. And also on Facebook where we promise uh, 100% cat-free videos. Cat-free. I think so. That's what we say. Anyway, um, by the end of the podcast, I'm just babbling. Uh, we're also, uh, I'm also hosting a meetup group. We'll see you Thursday if you want to come out and see Center Point Sleep Center's new place. And hopefully then next week on July 2nd out at St. Clair. Until then, yins, be careful out there.